In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In our Mass today, we pray for all the souls in purgatory, especially souls that are not remembered anymore. May the Lord really bless them and let them enter into His heavenly kingdom. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us all together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what you have done, what you have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, O Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God and mercy us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Look upon us, O God, greater and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all of our, our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Perhaps someone will say, how are the dead to be raised up? What kind of body will they have? A nonsensical question. The seed you sow does not germinate unless it dies. When you sow, you do not sow the full-blown plant, but a kernel of wet or some other grain. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown in the earth is subject to decay. What rises is incor incorruptible. What is sown is ignoble. What rises is glorious. Weakness is sown. Strength rises up. A natural body is put down and a spiritual body comes up. If there is a natural body, be sure there is also a spiritual body. The scripture has it, has it that Adam, the first man, became a living soul. The last Adam has become a life-giving spirit. 
Take note, the spiritual was not first. First came the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was of earth formed from dust. The second is from heaven. Earthly men are like the man of earth. Heavenly men are like the man of heaven. Just as we resemble the man from earth, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response, I will walk in the presence of God with the light of the living. I will walk in the presence of God with the light of the living. Now I know that God is with me. In God, in whose promise I glory, in God I trust without fear. What can flesh do against me? Your response? I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. I am bound, O God, by vows to you. Your thank offerings I will fulfill, for you have rescued me from death, my feet too from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. Your response? I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. Please stand to honor the Holy Gospel. Dear brothers and sisters, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. A large crowd was gathering with people resorting to Jesus from one town after another. He spoke to them in a parable. A farmer went out to sow some seed. In the sowing, some fell on the footpath where it was walked on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, sprouted up, then withered through lack of moisture. Some fell among briars, and the thorns growing up with it stifled it. But some fell on good soil, grew up, and yielded grain a hundredfold. As he said this, he exclaimed, let everyone who has ears attend to what he has heard. His disciples began asking him, him what the meaning of this parable might be. He replied, To you the mysteries of the reign of God have been confided, but to the rest in parables, that seeing they may not perceive, and hearing they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those on the footpath are people who hear, but the devil comes and takes the word out of their hearts, lest they believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. They have no root. They believe for a while, but fall away in time of temptation. The seed fallen among briars are those who hear, but their progress is stifled by the cares and riches and pleasures of life. They do not mature. The seed in good ground are those who hear the word in a spirit of openness, retain it, and bear fruit through perseverance. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thank you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, morning Father. Father. In today's gospel, we read the most classic parable, which we hear oftentimes 
being quoted in talking about our life in the Lord. What kind of soil are we? It is the parable of the sower and the seed which speaks eloquently our life of faith in the Lord Jesus. We all know that the seed is the word of God and that is Jesus himself who we accept in our life. St. John in his Gospels prologue says that our lives as disciples are all about allowing the seed to grow in our souls. It is allowing our Lord Jesus to enter into our lives so that he might bear good food within us. In the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, says, I still live my human life, but it is a life of faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. St. Paul epitomizes a man whose life is a fertile soil that bear fruit in plenty. The burial of good fruit in our lives will depend much on how we take care of our soil, our life, in relation to God. It is true, the soil will only be rich only if you add more elements for it to become fertile. In the realm of spiritual life, it can be compared in some sense in this way. Those seeds that fell on the footpath speaks of a soul who are shallow in giving attention to Jesus that the devil is not just him for our lives. The seed that fell on rocky ground, it tells about the person who allowed temptation to have the upper hand over Christ. The allurements of the devil which he presents to us is too much for the soul that it cannot resist the enticement of a saint that we are so weak to reject. Thus we attach ourselves into it and not the Lord. The seed among thorns it speaks of a soul that allows the worldly concerns to choke off both God and Jesus and the graces that the Lord will bring into our lives. We are in a world filled with so much enticement of allurements, temptations to the soul to bring it away from the past of the Lord. By ourselves, we are weak enough to conquer the power of evil that drag us away from the path of sanctification. However, if altogether we gather our strength and courage to ask the Lord to save us from these worthy powers, I am sure nothing would be impossible which the Lord cannot do for us. I believe the strength that we have will be the power that will conquer the power of evil that holds us to be weak. Just like the example of bright students who help their poor classmates in a class to be good students. In the same way, we can do the same if we work together for our sanctification in this world. Nothing would be impossible with the Lord guiding us. Similarly, a bad soil can become rich when mixed with fertile ones. The fertile ones may even get richer, supplementing rocks and sand. The gospel tells us, tells all of us who are willing to be enriched by the Lord in the spirit in his spiritual life, to help us till the field of our life, that it may become a rich soil. It is only in the Lord that we shall be strong. The letter, the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians says, The trials that you have had to bear are no more than people normally have. You can trust God not to let you be tried beyond your strength. And with any trial, He will give you a way out of it and the strength to bear. In this Holy Mass, let us ask for the grace of faith in the Lord Jesus and with intercession of Blessed Mother, the strength to remain steadfast in the midst of trials and difficulties. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice which is yours and mine be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. Let us pray. Look with favor on our supplication, O Lord, and in your kindness accept this, your servant's offering that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just our general salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. At His coming glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. holiness. Make holy therefore this kiss you pray by sending down your spirit upon him like the Jew fall so that he may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and not willing to his passion he took bread given thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat a bit for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, took the chalice of us were given thanks gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life that shows us salvation. Giving thanks that you've held us waiting in your presence and ministered to you. Humbly we pray that part of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Crispin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints of peace throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. pray with confidence in the holiday the words of our Savior gave us. grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may also be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in according to your will. You will reign forever and ever. Amen. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Now, my brothers and sisters, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, the love of God who takes away the sins of the world, happy we are called in His banquet. Lord, Lord I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects, not our own desires, may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Horatio Imperata, a prayer against COVID 19. God our Father, we come to you to you in your need, to ask protection against the COVID-19 that has deserved and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people that to find cures for this disease 
and to stem a transmission, protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us in always from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for, pray for us. us. Saint Raphael, pray the Archangel. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsud, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.